Hey friends, so glad you're here. Okay, today's really important. We're gonna be talking about how to treat ourselves kindly as we're painting, as we're navigating this whole wild, wonderful watercolor journey. And I know that sounds like kind of general and simple, but it's one of the hardest things you need to learn. You need to learn how to speak life and truth and positivity into your painting sessions, every single one. You need to train yourself how to be good to yourself. And I'm here to help you along the way. Do you wanna paint with me? Come on, let's go. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well, what do you mean, be kind to myself? It's the simplest thing in the world, but the most difficult. It's a habit, like anything else. And I know you're probably gonna roll your eyes when I liken this to like exercise, but, cause I don't really exercise regularly, but I know that it makes me feel better. And I know the more that I do it, the better I feel. And I can rely on that feeling. Okay, enough about exercise, but seriously, if you commit to creating a habit when you're painting of kindly speaking to yourself, whether it's just in your head, saying it to yourself, or saying out loud. I'm all for saying it out loud. And honestly, I build myself up with my own words out loud more than anything else. Okay, so what does that look like? You're painting, you're doing your thing, and you feel like the nerves, you get tight in the chest, your shoulders get rigid because you feel like you're screwing up. You know what I'm talking about. In that moment, I want you, instead of being like, oh, this is not good, this doesn't look good, I am so screwing this up, I want you to catch yourself. And I want you to say, but I really like this green color that blended with this blue right here. Now, this is just an example, obviously. I want you to flip the switch on your own mental chatter. Promise me this. You're gonna flip that switch. All right, so there's another way to do this whole speak kindly to yourself while you're painting. And this one's probably gonna feel the weirdest, but I want you to get a kitchen timer or put a timer on your phone, you know, because it is 2021. And I want you to set an alarm. So let's say you think you might paint for 25 minutes, whatever. Set an alarm for every, let's say three, four minutes. And when that ding happens, I want you to stop, I want you to examine what you've been working on, and I want you to look for something in your painting that you are proud of. It doesn't have to be something you're doing backflips over, okay, let's be honest. But it has to be something. You can find something every three to four minutes as you paint that you love. I know, I know, you're like, Christy, I thought this was supposed to be joyful, super casual, relaxed painting. Yes, but you have to build really solid habits in order to create the environment you need for a laid back, free spirited watercoloring experience. And this is one of those habits. All right, let's go get those timers. I promise you it works. All right, I have another idea, another thing that I do personally as a way to kind of push away the negative talk that inevitably happens as I paint, as we all paint. And this one's a little more controversial because I think there are, are many out there that would be like, well, that's giving up. Let's talk about it. This one is where you're getting frustrated. Things just don't feel right. You're having a hard time quieting that mental chatter that's telling you your painting basically is, is trash. Come on, we've all been there. We've all been there. This is a great spot to pause, to put that painting aside. Now, this is where, this is key. Put that painting aside, that painting that's in the moment causing you a lot of stress, put it aside. Don't throw it away. Do not rip it up, all right? Do not rip it up. Been there, done that. Put it aside and immediately, without worrying about what you're gonna paint, how you're gonna do it, how long you're gonna spend, I want you to pull out another sheet of paper and I want you to start another painting. I know, 
I know you think I'm, I'm crazy, a little insane, a little extra, but trust me, why do you think I have so many unfinished paintings? But seriously, it's a great way to kind of reset your brain, but it doesn't feel like quitting because you start a new painting. I mean, it isn't quitting because you started something new. You're still continuing on that journey. All right, friends, I don't know about you, but um, I'm really inspired to paint and I cannot post a video without painting. So let's do a little something. Okay, friends, I told you we were not just going to talk inspiration. We were going to actually paint. Now, I do want to ask you a favor. If you've liked anything I've said so far, if you're excited about this particular video, will you give that like button a little bit of love? Because you know what? That helps YouTube understand that maybe some more people need to see this video because... I am in the business of helping as many people as I can. So anyway, enough about that. But if you like what you're seeing, like what you're hearing, give that like button a hit. Thanks so much, friends. And while you're at it, subscribe too. We are going to paint what I like to call an imaginary flower, a fairy tale flower, if you will. Okay. And that's because this flower doesn't actually exist. Yeah. But there's beauty in that. There's joy in painting something that doesn't really exist in real life because there's less pressure. You don't have a photograph to work from. You don't have anything to compare your progress to. You're just painting what's in your beautiful brain. That's it. Let's get this started. I'm using Mission Gold watercolors today. I am using my half inch dagger. Depending on when you're watching this, it may not be available yet, but depending on when you're watching this, it may be on Amazon. So hit me up in comments and I can clarify that for you. I'm painting on Academy watercolor paper because you know that it is kind of my new obsession. So definitely get yourself some. I'm grabbing a blue, a little bit of water on my brush, Pressing down, slowly lifting up, twisting a little bit. There we go. Grabbing some pink. Same thing on the other side. Pressing down, twist, and lift up. There's your first flower petal. I'm going to probably do about five petals. Yeah, I'm grabbing an aqua, doing the same thing. And no, my brush wasn't clean, but it's okay. Grabbing a little bit of water now and blending out, filling out that flower petal. Some more water back onto the first petal I made to blend those two colors together. And no, I didn't wash my brush. And boom, boom, press and lift, press and lift, two little petals side by side. Little bit of pink, press, drag, lift up towards the center. And getting that aqua again, press, twirl, press, twirl. And friends, uh, that flower is coming to life and it is a beautiful thing. Now I'm reshaping. That's something that, you know, I need to talk about more probably is reshaping. I'm doing that right now by adding water to that aqua petal and then pulling out some color. Same thing there. I'm adding water to that pinky purple petal and pulling out some color. And that's technically what we call lifting. And I'm doing it again there. So you can always, if you've put down too much color, clean your brush, get some water on that brush and go back into an area you just painted and put that water down, let it sit there for 10 seconds and then lift it out with a clean dry brush. Doing it some more. I lift not often as a way to correct a mistake, friends. I lift as a way to actually paint. It's part of my style. You see how I'm kind of nudging the paint? All right, now I'm going back in with a bright pink. Everything here is still wet, friends, everything. And I'm going over the petals that I've already painted with some pink. Now back to blue. And look, remember, I don't mix on the page. So I laid down pink, I laid down blue, and it made this beautiful periwinkle-like purple. And I like that purple, so I'm dabbing it around in the other petals that are wet and letting it blend, blend, blend. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, back to some lifting because, you know, that's what I like. You gotta try this lifting thing. 
Don't think about lifting just for mistakes because it's not just for mistakes. And, oh, did you see that? When you lift, sometimes you end up pushing color, water, moisture into a nearby petal or leaf. And it's okay. It can be the most glorious, happy accident imaginable. So sometimes we want to let that happen. Now we're getting into some greens because it's time for leaves, friend. Look at that. Little baby leaves side by side, put together, make up one big leaf. Let's try that again. Press, drag, and lift. Press, drag, and lift over, over, over again. If you're not getting the point on your leaf when you do the lift, you would need to drag a little bit more and lift and drag slower. If you're lifting and dragging too quickly, you're going to get kind of a blunt ended leaf. So drag, lift slower. Grab some yellow, put a little center in that flower. This is wet on dry, but I'm nearby all of these wet petals. So you have to decide how much blending, how much color explosion and mingling do you want? I'm adding in some of that yellow right into my leaves. They're still wet just to add a little bit of interest. And remember when your leaves, your petals, your landscape elements, whatever it may be, when those elements are still wet, you can reshape and change their form. All right, friends, it's time. It's time for you to pause, for you to step back and compliment yourself. I mean, you knew this was coming, right? You knew this was coming. I want you to look at this painting. And I don't care if it's 90% in your opinion, ugly right now. I want you to find that moment that you are in love with and I want you to tell yourself about it, okay? I'll wait. Yeah, I'm waiting. Say it out loud. Say it out loud, say, hey, oh, this looks really nice here. Oh, I like the way those two colors mingled, okay. All right, just a friendly reminder. Now I'm going in with a really dark indigo. And even though things are still damp, I'm adding a little bit of ruffliness around that yellow for some contrast. And some more leaves. Press, drag, and lift. Reshape. Press, drag, lift. Real quick. And I'm clustering them. So my little leaves, when clustered together and a stem is added, look like like kind of a ferny type situation or um, a big leaf. Lovely. Now I'm going back in, adding some linear detail to those other leaf clusters that I did earlier. And yes, they're still damp, so you're not going to get the perfectly crisp line, but that's okay. This is a great time to step back and look and say, do I like the direction of these leaves? Do I like the composition? Do I feel like there's too much leaf down here, too much leaf up there? Do I wanna add a bud? These are conversations you can have with yourself. Grabbing a little bit of dark pink and it's time for some detailing. Oh, you know, friends, it's time. Using the very tip of my brush, and painting in some linear details. I'm radiating out from the center. So yes, you may be picking up some of that dark indigo paint that you laid down earlier. And you know what a little trick of mine is? Don't be afraid to go outside of the shape of your petal. See how I did that just there? You can also come in from the tip of each petal and create some linear detailing. Lovely. Friends, if you're enjoying this session, will you give a thumbs up on this? I would appreciate it so much. Now remember, this is a great time. Again, compliment yourself. Remind yourself that yours doesn't have to look just like mine. Remember, this is a fairy tale flower, friends. This is a fairy tale flower. 
All right, friends, wasn't that incredible? Didn't that feel good? I want you to hit me up in comments. Let me know your questions. Let me know what frustrated you. Let me know what surprised you. Let me know what delighted you and what compliments you gave yourself. Until next time, I cannot wait. Happy painting, friends. Mm -hmm.